Hi everyone and welcome to this episode of Kuiper Labs. In today's video we're going to be um, talking about the different types of rocks. So the three types of rocks that we're going to be um, introduced to today are called igneous, sedimentary and metamorphic rocks. Okay, so we're going to go through, kind of think about the context and where we would find each of these rocks. We're going to then look at each of these um, types of rocks in detail to look at how they, um, how specialised they are. Okay, so thinking about something called the rock cycle, which we're going to go through in some more detail in a future video, showing how the different kind of rocks on Earth kind of are connected to one another. So thinking about where they, they might be found in the Earth, Okay, so we have the three types of rocks we're going to talk about today. We've got igneous rocks over here on the right. We have sedimentary rocks over here on the left. And then metamorphic rocks down here in the bottom left. So these arrows and kind of the labels here show you some of the processes that are involved in converting one rock type to another. And, um, and so we're going to kind of look at each one as we go. Okay, so we're first going to focus on igneous rocks over here on the right hand side, the, the bit that's coloured. Now, so igneous rocks um, come originate from magma that exists under the surface of the earth. So molten, hot, liquid rock um, that is just underneath the crust. So this magma that you can see down the bottom here. Okay, so there's two types of igneous rocks that we encounter called intrusive and extrusive. And we're going to go through each. Um, type now. So intrusive igneous rocks are those that form beneath the Earth's surface. Okay, and they form when magma cools very slowly. So the magma, which is hot and liquid, form trapped underneath the Earth's surface and cooling very cooling down very slowly. And what we get as a result of that is large, well-formed crystals in these types of rocks. So we get things like granite, um, diorite, and gabbro. You can see particularly granite, it's very distinctive here that you're getting large multicolored kind of crystals present inside that structure. So these crystals have had a long time to grow and build to be larger sizes um, and they're really well formed and kind of very um, particular in their structure. Um, and you can see depending on exactly what minerals, exactly what chemical compounds um, um, are found inside this rock that you get different colors um, from the different components. Extrusive igneous rocks, so extrusive comes from the word extrude, which means to squeeze out or to be pushed out. So extrusive rocks form on the Earth's surface after a volcanic eruption has happened. So magma comes out of the Earth's surface and forms lava during a volcanic eruption, and then this lava is turning into these extrusive rocks. So it cools down much faster, and so you get small crystals instead. Okay, so we get ones like obsidian, this really sh uh, shiny black, it's a beautiful looking rock sample. Uh, and then we get basalt and andesite and pumice, which is a really interesting one. It's the only rock that will actually float on water because of these little trapped kind of um, hardened air bubbles that may mean that this rock is very, very low in density. So it's actually less dense than water and will float. Okay, but so these rocks that have much smaller kind of crystals from here, you can't even really see them. Um, that they they form because this magma cools down very quickly. So depending on exactly what the magma, how the magma is put together, and the way in which it cools down, and what the environment is like, that affects um, what kind of um, structure that it has. Pumice tends to form when we get a volcanic eruption that's explosive, where we get lots of gas that forms, and it kind of then gets trapped into that structure. A bit like when, if you make um, if you make honeycomb or something like that, where the the you know where the, the bubbles of gas kind of the around them is being kind of trapped and hardened, and then it sets and it's very light. Okay, so now we're going to focus on sedimentary rocks over here on the left hand side. So thinking more generally about in this rock cycle, that what happens what's happening is that there's lots of changing processes that happen before we get to forming these sedimentary rocks. So they form from something that we call sediments as the name would suggest. So what we get, forces including ice, snow, rain, wind, lots of kind of natural forces in break down existing rocks on the surface into really small particles. We call this process weathering. Now weathering can be physical, it can be chemical, um, lots of things can happen that cause these particles to break apart. What then happens is that these really small particles that it might be like sand or you know that, that sort of thing are carried away from wherever they were. They, are, they deposit down into a particular place as a, in the form of this sediment 
particularly ha occurring in the oceans, and then they hard where they harden into rock. This process called lithification. And so these rock types are the only types to contain fossils. Um, so because the idea is that the other rock types that we have form under intense heat and pressure, and no living thing will survive those sorts of um, situations. Whereas um, depending on how quickly that these, these sediments can form, that living things can be buried in sediment, um, you know, or just after they've died and then they're buried in sediment, and that then they become trapped as the rock hardens, and so then the, it, over a very long time period, the fossil, the living things breaks down into a fossil. So we get two types of sedimentary rocks called clastic and non-clastic. So clastic sedimentary rocks form from weathered particles that stick together. So these actual kind of physical, physically broken down pieces that then, because of the, the way that they all kind of come together, they stick. Um, and that they, these ones get classified according to the size of the particles or the grains that make them up. So conglomerate, you can see we get these really very large, almost like pebbles that make up conglomerate and then kind of the rest of this hardened material in the middle. Whereas then things like sandstone or shale, um, we get much smaller particles that have that um, are involved in forming those rocks. Okay, so these these are the ones that form from the things that are physically broken down. Whereas non-clastic sedimentary rocks form from as a result of chemical reactions. Um, so rather than um, the, the you know the physical little pieces that stick together, that because of the, uh, a chemical change that's happened, particularly in the ocean, that then these certain chemicals kind of build up and they deposit. So we get limestone, uh, rock gypsum, and rock salt. Okay, so limestone chemically is the same, um, you know, um, is, has the same kind of chemical component as lots of seashells. You can see there's lots of fossilized actually imprints of seashells in limestone in this image here. Um, gypsum has the same. Um, uh, has the same chemical composition as chalk or calcium sulfate, which you might um, put on the you might put on the garden, and then rock salt, just like sea salt or you know table salt that we would eat. Okay, and so um, they form you know because of a chemical process, not a physical breaking down process. Okay, now we're going to lastly look at metamorphic rocks. So the blue kind of band that you see over on the left over here. Um, now, if you if you have a look at this section, you see that there's lot, and then in this diagram, there's lots of arrows that point towards um, this metamorphic kind of band. So, lots of things that can end up as metamorphic rocks. So, they form from both igneous and sedimentary rocks of all types um, that become changed by heat and pressure, in particular, because the word metamorphic um, comes from metamorphosis, um, which means change form. So, you know a Caterpillar um, undergoes metamorphosis into a butterfly, and so this changing of form um, is what metamorphic refers to. Okay, so we in, there's changes in temperature and pressure in where these rocks are found. What then happens is that the minerals, these chemical substances or compounds inside the rock become unstable, and so they're about to be changing. Now there's two kind of things that they can do. They either rearrange themselves into layers, a process we call foliation. So they kind of they start to kind of squash into layers, or the com the, the chemicals actually kind of recrystallize or make new crystals that are larger than they were before. But the key thing here is that they're not actually melting. Um, so the heat is involved and the pressure is involved, but they're not actually going to become a liquid. That they actually just because of these changes, that their solid form is is undergoing some change. So we talk about two types, foliated and non-foliated metamorphic rocks, depending on whether they've done this process or not. So foliated metamorphic rocks, um, they form under unequal, very high pressures. So where the pressure is not all in, in uniform, you know, around, you know, from all directions, but the pressure is very high. Yeah, so if the pressure, the direction of the pressure is kind of coming down, then what happens is that they, they realign, the minerals realign at right angles, so kind of pointing across this way based on that pressure. So they're kind of like squashing down into layers that line up with that. And so then what that means is that, um, you know, so these examples you get slate and gneiss and schist, um, say those carefully, um, so that you get these kind of stripes or strip kind of uh, look to them, so you, which you can see particularly over here. So you're kind of getting, you know, the dark bands and then the light bands as these different kind of sections of the minerals kind of are squashed down 
into this kind of layered appearance. Okay, it's a little less noticeable in, in these other ones, but in terms of if you look at them kind of side on or like with a cross section, you see kind of these, these squashed down sections. Now, if, the pro if these rocks haven't undergone this squashing kind of unequal pressure process, um, we call them non-foliated. So they form under high temperatures, but low, even uniform pressure around the outside. Okay, so they're not being really squashed down very hard but there's high temperatures involved. So this is where the minerals are recrystallizing into larger sizes. So they're changing and then growing to be bigger as a result of the temperatures. So there's two kind of main ones here that I want to point out. Quartzite, we call, uh, which are, comes from sandstone that's been heated in, this, in these conditions and then changed. And so we get quartz. Um, and so the, 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 we see some very similar, um, so it's got the same sort of chemistry, but that actually the appearance is quite different. And then marble um, comes from limestone. So chemically, it's the same chemical as in limestone, um, but because of this heat and pressure that then it's been transformed. So its appearance is different, its structure is, is very different, um, but th it has a lot of similar kind of properties in that respect. Okay, so just to recap. So we've talked about igneous rocks, which we talk about intrusive and extrusive, Intrusive, where it forms under the surface. Extrusive, forms at the surface. Sedimentary rocks, where we get clastic from physical weathering and non-clastic from chemical reactions. And metamorphic rocks, we get foliated from high uneven pressure and non-foliated from low even pressure. All right, thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.